Hi, I'm Sabra Lane. You know what? Not all the news is bad. And that's what we're trying to do here at The Bright Side, put a spotlight on the ideas and programs that individuals and groups are coming up with to try and fix problems. And that can be encouraging and inspiring. For example, the amazing doctors at Brisbane's Mater Hospital who are performing delicate surgery on babies who are still in their mother's wombs and the brave parents who just want their little one to survive. Baby wants to say hello. Hello there. Ah, oh, then we have a face. <laughs> so the aim of surgery is to get in and protect those nerves so that you can preserve function. Conducting this operation in the womb rather than waiting until she's born will actually double the baby's chances of being able to walk on her own unassisted, of course, when she's ready. And that's an exciting prospect for her parents, Michaela and Peter. Give me a quick cut. Look after her. Okay, so the uterus is out. Open fetal surgery is very complex because you're actually making a big hole in the womb that could potentially trigger premature labour. So the operation went well, McCann. We need you now to recover. <laughs> <laughs> the decisions they've made on behalf of their children are just so brave. Isn't that incredible? The wonders of modern medicine. Now we're going to take a look at something else that's quite exciting. Have you heard about the ABC's Anxiety Project? We've taken a deep dive looking at this condition which affects thousands of people. Fortunately though, these days we're better at diagnosing it and we're better as a society in talking about it openly. Now Behind the News has made this video for kids but I think it's just as relevant for adults. Take a look. Right now, there's some pretty heavy stuff going on. So here's a quick guide from us on how to deal with news that you might find upsetting. It's completely normal to feel overwhelmed when bad things happen. First, it's worth remembering that these events are in the news because they don't happen very often. You might catch some pretty terrifying words or images on the news or on social media. They can be used to tell people what's going on, but often they're the worst and most shocking parts of what's happened. Whenever there's something bad happening, you can be sure there are always good people there trying to help. I find another good thing that helps lighten my day is big, cuddly, and he's not afraid of commitment. You curious? I'm talking about Bobby. He's a dog I adopted, and you're about to meet Clifford. This is Clifford. He's a four-year-old bull Arab cross. So as you can see, he's pretty big, which can be off-putting for some potential adopters. Now, Clifford is one of 35 big dogs looking for a loving family at the Lost Dogs Home. To try to entice families, the shelter has created a sort of dating app for families and dogs, and there's an, even an option to swipe right for perfection. Isn't he cute? The Lost Dogs Home in Melbourne has halved its fees for big dogs and it looks like it's working. Can you tell me who we've got here? Who have we got? Spider. Spider. We've met today and we're a bit excited to take him home. What are you going to do when you get home? Throw the ball. So many people adopted pets during lockdowns for companionship. We found it really, really hard. The pandemic was hard, especially for those on their own. They found themselves completely isolated from family and friends. But imagine this. If you could build a home on shared land with like-minded people, it's an idea that's gaining traction in Canberra. And by mentioning Canberra, I don't mean Parliament House. I mean Canberra City. Let's have a look. I suppose it's no different from living in a, a regular townhouse complex, except that the intention from people who live there is very much um, to try to um, work together as a group um, through, you know, through life's projects, be they gardening or child rearing or, or uh, you know, creative projects or film nights. The community works together to design and build their homes rather than using traditional developers. Wouldn't that be fantastic to have in Canberra as well? The ACT government isn't on board yet, but with a crisis in housing and affordability, we might be hearing a lot more about this idea. Now, let me introduce you to Wendy Mitchell. She is a force of nature. 
She's a British author with dementia and she's really changing the way we think about it. She writes a daily blog and her mantra is there's still joy when you have dementia. One thing that has improved her life and enabled her to live on her own still is new technology. Technology has taken on a huge meaning in my life now. And I used to be a technophobe. But I never think you can't learn new things when you have dementia. Wendy uses a virtual assistant and she says it's fabulous. I can ask her to switch the kettle on downstairs so that I don't forget why I've gone downstairs when I, the minute I get down there. Because I live alone, I can talk to her. And this may sound silly, but at night time when I go to bed, I say good night to her because she will say, talk to you tomorrow. Isn't that marvellous? New technology allowing us to live our best lives. Now join me, we're going to the stunning Marion Bay in Tasmania. It used to host a great event called the Falls Festival. But two and a half centuries ago, it was simply home to the Palawa people. And it had an entirely different name and identity to those that roamed and fished and slept here. The place is named Marion Bay after the French explorer, Marc Joseph Marion Dufresne. But Aboriginal leaders think it would be more respectful if it was named after an Aboriginal man who was killed there during the first contact with the French. Marion sent two undressed men to shore, bearing objects such as cloth and a mirror. They then tried to send more boats down, but upon doing so, that's when the conflict started. Indigenous leaders would like this discussion to be part of a broader examination of many sites around the state and past abuses. Would you ever think about crossing Bass Strait with, say, a sail and a surfboard? I wouldn't, but have a look at this. I think society has become so used to being comfortable. Andrew English calls himself an old bugger who can still do stuff. He certainly can. He's the first in the world to cross that treacherous strait in just a wing foil. Now, in case you're not sure what that is, that is a hydrofoil strapped to a windsurfer. Crazy. I mean, I'm so aware of mortality. I've had, you know, I've had a heart condition for the last 10 years. I've been resuscitated three times. I've had eight major operations. So there's points there where I could have keeled over from a stroke at any time. Those near-death experiences, as well as bouts of depression, have made that place outside his comfort zone the best place for Andrew to be. I'm turning 55 this year, and, you know, I'm far from being in the prime of my life. but. I can honestly say I've never felt happier. I'm not sure if Andrew will become a Pied Piper and suddenly find himself followed by dozens of people trying the same thing. But if you want to, push that boat out. Woo! I just wish people wouldn't have that close perception about their own ability and their own capability. If this story inspires somebody to go and do their own little world first, whatever that is, whatever that, whether that's running further, whether that's doing something a little bit unusual, that'd be amazing if it inspires one person. Um, I would consider it a success. As someone who broke a wrist flying a foil kite, I will stick to my day job. Thanks for your company on the bright side. And if you want to see more of these stories, don't forget you can subscribe to that address on the bottom of your screen. See you next time.